What's going on, everybody? It's Sasha, your market expert here in Charlotte. Hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another monthly market report for the month of April. And before I even dive into this, even though it's April right now, all the stats that we go over today are going to be from the month of March. So all the stats are done in arrears. And the reason we do that is so we can have an entire month of data compiled together so we have the most accurate information. And before we go ahead and jump into these stats, I want to talk to you guys, like always, a little bit about what I'm seeing in the market today, right now. And it's such an interesting market because it's a feeling out process. Things have changed drastically from what it was eight plus months ago to now, but I think there's still a good amount of hesitancy just because of all these different factors that are, you know, uh, going on, you know, with, with everything, with all the inflation, with the, you know, the job claims, all of that stuff. But I don't want to focus on that. I just want to focus on the market, but I do see, um, you know, hesitancy in some buyers and hesitancy in some sellers. Now, the biggest problem we're having right now in Charlotte is just the inventory, and speaking of the inventory, the peak of our inventory, when we normally see the most new listings come on the market is going to be May, June, July, and depending on the year, sometimes even April. So from right now, these next three to four months are going to be very, very telling of exactly where the market is going to head to. Uh, interest rates, like everything else, they're dependent on all the different variables happening. So interest rates are fluctuating daily. I think personally, based on speaking with lenders, I think they're going to stay around that lower six range, maybe you know, dip a little bit into the high fives and things like that. And that's where we see some activity. Um, if you watched last month's market report, you know I was telling you that I've seen so much activity in the now that I was expecting the average sales price and the median sales price to go up for this month, which they have. So it's like I said, it's just very interesting right now. But this market today, as we sit in it, reminds me of the same exact market that we had in 2018 and 2019, minus the prices and minus the inventory. Charlotte, a lot of people don't know this. Charlotte, there, we've had low inventory for quite a while. And even in 2018, 2019, we were still hovering, you know, between two and a half to three months of inventory. And right now we're about 1.3 months of inventory. So we had double, but what I'm saying is the activity that is happening with buyers and sellers feels exactly the same as it did in 2018 and 2019, which kind of gets me to think, if the activity is feeling the same and we have the high prices and we have the low inventory, what's the activity going to feel like when we have double the inventory and we still have these higher rates? I'm wondering if that's right there kind of where the drastic change might happen. But right now, like I said, the prices are going to be fluctuating based off the month. I think now they're going to start fluctuating a little bit downward because we're projected to start seeing more new listings in April, May, June, and July. So if all that pans out, the prices should be steadily declining, which is what I personally think is gonna happen. Real estate is very slow to react. It's not the stock market. You're not gonna see an article on the news and things come tumbling down. Real estate is very slow to react. So like I said, I think we're just gonna stay steady and up, down, up, down, and then slowly start trickling a little bit downward. And you guys know this by now. I think we're going to see a 20% decrease from our all-time highs, which is going to put our median price point at around 325 or below. I don't see that out of reality, getting the median price point to 300 to 325. But like I said, there's just so many factors going into it. So um, if you're buying, selling, investing, if you're looking to move to the Charlotte area, make sure you're subscribed to the channel to keep up with these market reports and also keep up with the other videos I've been doing. And I want to say something right now, but I need you to really listen to what I'm saying. I personally do not think you should be offering above asking price for homes right now. I understand the five, 10, 15, maybe $20,000 above asking price. And if you are doing something like that, and if you're offering above that 30, 40, 50, because believe it or not, people are still doing that. Um, if you're doing something like that, it is understandable if it is a unique property. 
if it's in a prime location, if it's like a custom house, if you're looking in Cotswold, Myers Park, Dilworth, South End, uh, South Park, you know, areas similar to that, you know, if you're looking at a property in Cornelius that's on the lake, Lake Wiley, those properties are very unique. You know, if one pops up, it might not pop up again, something exactly like that. That's, you know, essentially not cookie cutter. You know, if it's like a Victorian style home, stuff like that, totally okay to go in very strong if you want to. And if it's going to be a home, you're going to be planning on living in for, you know, five, 10 plus years, totally understand that. But for the most part, I don't think you should be offering, you know, more than five, 10, $15,000 on some of these homes unless the sales, the comparable sales in the neighborhood warrant you doing that. The house has a new roof. It has upgrades. And the way you'll tell that if you're working with me, I take care of all this stuff for you. I'm very blunt. Hey, this price, you know, the, hey, this house is overpriced. I wouldn't do it if I was you. The decision's up to you. So I'm very blunt. If you're not working with me as your agent, your other agent should just be doing that research and telling you if it's a smart idea, kind of where you need to be and things like that. So like I said, listen to what I just said. You know, don't just say, hey, well, Sasha said, don't offer over asking. And then, you know, the price was how super aggressively. And if you would have got it at 10, 15, 20 above whatever the listed price was, it still would have been a good deal because the other surrounding houses sold for a lot more. So I just want to get that, uh, you know, kind of in, in engraved in your mind. The 5, 10, 15, you know, is it, still okay depending on the home itself. But um, now let's just hop into these stats, which are a little bit interesting. And as always, call, text, email me if you have any questions, if there's anything I can ever do for you. I'll do anything I can to help you in any way that I can. All my contact information is right here. Um, now let's get into the stats, starting with new listings. So in regards to new listings, we had 4,824 new listings in the month of March, and that is still a 9.2% decrease from the amount of listings that we had last year. However, it's a 1,300 plus more new listings than we had in the month of February, which is great news, but we are still behind based off of the new listings that we had in 22. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, April, May, June, and July is normally when we see the most amount of listings hit the market. So we should be expecting that to happen here in the next three to four months. In regards to pending sales, we had 4,407 home sales pending in the month of March. And that is a 5.9% decrease from this time last year. And as I mentioned, the higher rates, the higher prices, um, everything kind of going up with the inflation that we're having right now, the affordability is down. So it's no surprise that the pending sales are down. And like I said, this is a very much a feeling out process for a lot of the buyers and also the sellers in this market. So pending sales are going to be down, but I'm very curious what's going to happen as we start entering these next couple months when we start seeing more new listings. Now let's get into the average sales price and the median sales price. So the average sales price in the month of March came in at $442,000 and it has a 3.1% increase from this time last year. And when comparing it to the month of February, it's a $21,000 increase. Like I mentioned last time, we were down from our all-time highs, $53,000 in the average sales price. But I was telling you last month that I was seeing a lot of activity, a lot of multiple offers, and now it jumped that $21,000. But take a look at 2021 and 2022. We had a 16.8% increase in average sales price. Then we had a 15.4% increase in average sales price. And now we have a 3.1% increase. So we're significantly down in the jumps that we were having before. However, because the market here in Charlotte is still very strong, it's still a 3.1% increase. But the fact that, you know, we're not at 15, 16% increases right now is just saying that the market is cooling a little bit, but staying very stable. Now let's jump into the median sales price, which came in at $368,000. And that is a 0.4% decrease from this time last year. And it's roughly $13,000 more than the median sales price was in the month of February. Now, this is the first time we've seen a decrease in the median sales price in the last couple of years. 
Like literally in the last couple of years, the first time we've seen a decrease in the median sales price. Yes, it is only 0.4% of a decrease, but it's a decrease. <laughs> Everything else that we've been having has been, you know, literally five plus percent every single year, not to mention, you know, obviously 2020, 21 and 22, where we had 12 and a half percent. And then in 22, we had a 20.2 percent increase in the median sales price. But steadily, literally like over the last 10 years or so, we've had like five to seven percent increases every year. And this is the first time we're starting to see a decrease. I know it's only 0.4 percent, but it's getting us in the right direction. And as I mentioned, I saw a lot of activity, saw a lot of multiple offers. So the median sales price went up for the month of March, but I'm very curious to see what's going to happen when we start to get that more inventory in. You know, I'm able to negotiate a decent amount down on some houses that have been sitting on the market for a little while. Um, the stuff that's hitting the market right away, everything is going to vary depending on the activity. But I still am sticking to my guns. I still think we're going to end up seeing the median sales price, you know, in the next eight to 12 months, possibly 18 months, hit that low of 325, possibly even 300. But like I said, there's so many variables in play. We just need to keep our eye on this stuff. And obviously make sure you're subscribed so you can keep up and I'll let you know when that median sales price hits those lows. And when I think we're at the lowest we are before we start that next bull run in the housing market. Now let's get into days on market, which came in at 48 and that is 128% increase from this time last year, and it's just a two-day increase from the month of February. But again, take a look at 21 and 22. We had a 45% decrease in days on market in 21, and we had a 16% decrease with days on market in 22, and now we're up 128%. And just for reference, the more days on market a property is, the better it is for buyers, the less days on market a property is, the better it is for sellers. We're heading in that trajectory. And this is one of the stats that I mentioned is very similar to 2018 and 2019. So what's it going to be like when we start building that inventory? We'll see in a couple months. Now let's talk about the percent. Now let's talk about the percentage of the original list price received, which came in at 96.2. And that is a 5.6% decrease from this time last year. And essentially what this stat is telling you is on average, you can expect to pay 3.8% below the listed price of a property. But again, that's on averages. Every situation is gonna be different. And this stat actually went up 1% from the month of February. But like I said, due to the activity that we were having. Now let's jump into months of inventory, which came in at 1.3. That is 116% increase from this time last year. However, we are not budging from last month. We're not budging from the month of February. It was also at 1.3%. Like I said, there's a lot of hesitancy out there on the seller side because, hey, once I sell my home, I'm in a very good position right now where my interest rate is relatively low. Why would I sell my home, buy a new home, and have to pay a lot more in interest that I currently am paying? And that is one of the reasons we're not seeing the new listings come to market. One of my lenders had mentioned it's a really good thing if we can get the rates to the mid fives or high fives because a lot more sellers will feel a lot more comfortable selling their home and then taking that equity and then buying a new one because their payment would be relatively okay. Um, and then essentially, you know, refinance in the future once they go sub four, sub, you know, I'm not going to say sub two, but, you know, mid threes or whatever the case is. But we're still low, but like I said, April, May, June, July is going to be a very telling tale for where the real estate market is going to be heading. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, call, text, email me anytime. I'll catch you on the next one. Take care. Bye.